everybody. We apologize for starting late, but the flight is taking off. Let's encourage people and comfort them. Uh, we have Pastor Manyan in the house. He'll be joining us in a second. Uh, technology was giving us issues, but now let's take off Basalani. Amen. We know Gukona is La Sekenani. Amen. Sing, 
service will be a blessing to you. Um, I don't make it a habit to speak for too long, so I will help you in saving your data and um, your time by just being brief. I hope that I will be as brief as I hope to be. Um, but if I, by chance, if I by chance pass uh, the 10 minute mark then I usually say that then it's not me um, time uh, somebody else has taken over for tonight's short devotion we read together from the book of Exodus chapter 20 Exodus chapter 20 um, verse 1 maybe let me also thank uh, my friend here for inviting me to come and speak to God's people from all walks of life from different places in life and I pray that tonight's message may reach you and um, draw you closer to God and maybe help you realize how blessed you are even under circumstances that you find yourself in. Exodus chapter 20 verse 1 and 2. Exodus chapter 20 verse 1 and 2 and there the Bible reads as follows. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus name, amen. Let us pray together. <clears throat> our God and our Father in heaven, we want to thank you dear Lord for the reading of your word and we pray that as we enter into the discussion as we go through your word dear lord may you speak to us in a way that you'd want us to know and understand you 
want to pray this evening for everyone who is under the sound of my voice who tuned into this program because they are going through difficulties in life because they are going through a lot i want to pray dear lord that may you meet all your people at uh, their point of need i pray that um, you may increase and i decrease may your people hear you speak through me this i pray in your son's name jesus amen Exodus chapter 20, um, verse 1 and 2 is a very popular text, and I know that we know it because right after verse 1 and 2, we get into the Ten Commandments as, 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 as they are written down here. The Lord there says, uh, and the Bible there says, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And I want us to start by noting perhaps that history is important to Israel. Um, God's presence and his identity are recognized through his actions in the past, and that is in the life of the Hebrew people. So God's identity and his presence, they are really identified or they are recognized in his past actions in the lives of the Israelites. And, 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 and when they recognize this past that God has with them, then the, 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 the recognition of this past then becomes, becomes a, a basis on which their hopes for a better future are, are, are built. The, 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 the actions of God in the past are then the basis on which Israel puts its own hopes for the future. So in other words, Israel, for it to understand the type of future it will have, they will then have to glance, glance back and see what God had done for them in the past in order for them to have a slight idea of what God will or can do for them in the past, I mean in the future. So God is unpredictable. God is unpredictable, but if we therefore want to understand or if we therefore want to have a bit of an understanding or a bit of, 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 of information on what God will do in our lives personally as well, we need to take time and sit back and look back on the things that happened in the past. Look back into our lives and see what God has done for us in the past. And when we come to the conclusion by faith that it could not have been me, who moved myself from this place to the next. Yes, if, it, if we come to the conclusion by faith that it could never have been by my strength that I'm standing where I am today, then we then recognize that it was God acting in the past. And therefore, when we have this view of an active God in the past, then we have this attitude that this God who was active in the past is active now and will continue to be active even tomorrow. Yes, so that is the understanding of Israel. And God understands Israel's attitude regarding the past, the present, and the future. God understands that Israel will believe that he is God and will be God if he talks to them regarding their past. And that is why then when God shows up to Moses... When he shows up and introduces himself to Moses, he does not simply say, I am God. But he takes Moses back to the past. He says, I am the God of your father. Oh. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. And I am the God of Jacob. Yes. God connects himself with Israel's history. And when he connects himself with the history of Israel, then he knows that Moses will pay attention to him. He knows that Moses will listen to him because Moses knows that if he was God in the past, then he should be God even today. If he knows my forefathers, that is Abraham, that is Jacob, and that is Isaac, if he knows them, then he should be God. He should be the God that protected them in the past. He should be the God that led them in the past. He should be the God that provided for them in the past. And if he is that God, then I too can believe and trust that he is that God. And I want to suggest to God's people today that there is only one way 
Our faith will grow. Our faith will grow when we sit down and take note of what God has been busy doing in our lives in the past. The past informs the present, and the present will inform even the future. And that's what God does when he shows up to Moses. He says to him, I am the God of your father. But that's not where we are. That's chapter 3. And when we quickly move to chapter 20, God introduces or reintroduces himself. But please pay attention together with me. That when we get to chapter 20, God introduces himself in the same way, but the tone and the words have changed. In chapter 3, God says to Moses, I am the God of your father. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. But when we get to chapter 20, then God says, I am the Lord your God. Please. He is now able to say this to Moses. Let me, before I rush to that part, let me clear up this one. In chapter 3, God says, I am the God of your father. He has to talk to Moses regarding Moses' history, uh, Israel's generic history. Because up until this point, it's possible. Moses grew up in the house of Pharaoh. He knows many gods. So up until this point, Moses must probably think that when God shows up and says, I am God, Moses would have asked, which one are you? Out of the many, identify yourself. But this, when God introduces himself with Isaac, with Jacob, with Abraham, then Moses can connect. He doesn't even have to ask such questions. So God says, I am the God of your fathers. And then God then says, chapter 3, he says, I am here to take you out of the land of Egypt. We quickly run to chapter 20. God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Chapter 3, God says, I have come to take you out. When we arrive at 20, God says, I am your God and I have taken you out. And I want us to maybe start here this evening, brethren, that God shows up for his people. God shows up for his people and God always does what he said he will do. In chapter 3, God said to them, I have come to take you out. In chapter 20, God says, now I have taken you out. And I want to suggest to, the God, to God's people that God is faithful to the promises that he does, that he makes. God is faithful. God shows up for his people. God does what he said he will do. And I know that we know the promises of God in our lives. And I want to guarantee you this evening, I put my head on the block and I say to you, God will show up. Yes, sir. And when he shows up, he will do something about it. God is not like men who may come to us today and say, I will, but never will. God shows up and he does what he said he will do. In the beginning, he said to them, I am here to take you out. At the end of the story, God says, I did what I said I will do. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And I want to say that God is faithful to God's, to his people. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 says that he who promised is faithful. Mm -hmm. I learned that in the free state when I was still there. The one that makes promises, that is God. He is faithful and true. To his promises and I'm simply here to say to you what he said he will do in your life God will do it second Timothy chapter 2 verse 13 Timothy I mean Paul says to, to Timothy that he says that even when we are faithless God is faithful because God cannot deny himself Whew. the best in other words faithfulness is not something God does. Faithfulness is something God is. God is faith. It is in his nature. If he then becomes unfaithful, then it means he has taken himself out of himself and put himself aside. 
So when, 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 T, when Paul says to, to, to Timothy that God is faithful, he cannot deny himself. When he doesn't show up in your life like he said he would, then it would be out of character for himself. And God does not go out of character. And so I'm simply here to say to you, brethren, that whatever it is that you believe that God has promised you, Claim it in the name of Jesus because he will do it. For I know the plans I have for you. Not to harm you, but to prosper you. To bring you an expected end. Whatever it is that you are waiting for from the Lord, trust and believe that God will show up and he will do it for you. God is faithful that's what we learn from Exodus chapter 3 until we reach chapter 20. That God said, I am here to take you out. And at the end of it, God could stand and say, I have done that which I said I will do. I have taken you out. And I want to say to the God's people that God is faithful. And then, and then the Bible says that when he speaks to, Paul, I mean, to Moses, when he speaks, thanks, thanks, man. When he speaks to When he speaks to Moses, he says, I am the Lord, your God. When he started there, when he started there, he had to tell Moses about the people that Moses knows. Now God becomes a bit personal. Because I believe that God now believes <clears throat> that even in the life of Moses, he has proven himself to be God. And, and, and this is the story of faith. Some of us, some of us had never met this God. We heard about him. We heard about him. From our parents, we were raised Adventist. I was raised Adventist. I used to go to church and I didn't know what it meant. But there came a point in life where God now stopped being the God of my grandfather and became the God that I have seen, I have known, and I can testify of. All along, he was a God of other people's testimonies. But at some point, God switched up and showed up in my life. And he became a God of my own testimonies. And so I'm simply here to say that at some point in life as well, God's tone in your life will change. Now you may know him as the God who has done it for others. As the God who did it for the neighbor as the God who did it for your mother. But at some point, God will show up in your life and he will say to you, I am your God. Mm. And, then, and then he says to, to, to Moses, he says, I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Mm. <laughs> we are reaching the end very soon. He says, I brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. There is something that I personally feel that you know, when we read chapter 20 of Exodus, before we reach um, um, verse 3, we, the Ten Commandments, because that, that is generally what we use chapter 24. But before we, we reach, we, quick, we are quick to run to the Ten Commandments. And, and, and I, 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 here is something that I think we are missing when God speaks to Moses at this point. When God says, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. When God says, I brought you out, hidden within that statement, I brought you out, is this concept, and, and I want to put it this way, when God says, I brought you out, he is hiding a, um, oh man, I don't know how to put it, but it will come out, it will come out, here it is. When God says, I brought you out, hidden behind, or, 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 or sandwiched between that statement and all other statements, is that I kept you. Please understand me. When God says, I brought you out of the land of Egypt, he says another part of it that's hidden from here is that I kept you. I kept you long enough in Egypt for you to realize the day when I will take you out of Egypt. When God says, I took you out, I mean, the, 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 when God arrives and takes them out of Egypt, I believe that is the second step in the long step of the plan of salvation. The first step was to keep them in the land of Egypt. And what I mean by that is to shelter them in the land of Egypt. 
is to protect them in the land of Egypt. Protect them long enough so that when he takes them out, they may realize it. Some of them had died in Egypt. And I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. Some of us are surviving things that others have killed themselves over. And that is because God has kept us long enough in these things. So that when he shows up and says, I have taken you out, you don't only recognize that God has taken you out, but you also recognize that while you were in it, God enveloped you. That while you were in it, God sheltered you. The children of Israel were not even meant to reach chapter 20 of Exodus because in chapter 1, Pharaoh says, let's deal with them. Let's kill their sons. Let's, let's, let's just oppress them. They were never meant to go up. And I want to suggest to the church even this evening that sometimes before we rush for the exit point, let us look around in our lives and we'll recognize that even before we reach the exit point, God has been sheltering us. God has been protecting us. He, he simply says to them that, 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 that I kept you. I protected you. I sandwiched you. I enveloped you. Amen. There are things that are meant to consume us as God's people. And we are constantly praying to God that may we leave this place. May we exit out of this one. May, may you take away the pain of this and that. But what you fail to recognize is that in the midst of that mess, you still have a voice to say to God, take me out. While there are people who did not live long enough to even say, take me out. So I'm simply saying, brethren, this evening, that God has protected us even under the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Hey, people have died of COVID. Some of you as we speak, or some of us as I speak to you, we don't know what it means to have that thing. Some of us have buried our loved ones in this mess while others don't know what it means to bury others. God has managed to somehow put us together even in this mess. And I want to guarantee you that that's not the end of the story. God will not just keep us in it, protect us in it. One day he will show up and say, I brought you up. And I want to conclude by saying that sometimes we must admit that there are places from which God brought us out. We must admit, brethren, um, a friend of mine, I think he started this series when Mutuakai, uh, Mamel, I mean, Nonofo. Nonofo preached a sermon some time ago, and he said, dare not testify falsely against your God. As the challenge of life is that we have learned to look at the sizes of the challenges that we have or the magnitude of the challenges that we have. And when we pay attention to the magnitude and the size of the challenges that we have, we will never recognize the good things that God does for us. When your attention is on the bad, you don't have time for the good. And so I'm simply here to say that God has sheltered us. And we, we must admit this evening, brethren, that there are places from which we came out that we were never meant to come out. God brought us out. There are relationships from which we were never meant to come out, but God brought us out. There are business deals that were never meant to succeed, but God made it possible. There are, there are just so many things that we can sit here and count that were not meant to be, but God made them happen. God brought them out. And I want to suggest to you this evening that I care. I really care what it is that you are going through. But I want to also guarantee you that God will show up in your life and he will deliver. I don't know what is it that's bothering you. I don't know what is it that is heavy on your shoulders. I don't know what is it that keeps you up at night because, hey, this period of COVID seems like it's not just COVID, there's just a bad spirit also, more than COVID. People of God are just going through a lot. And I know that most of us, as we sit here, we are sitting 
late at night we cannot sleep because all these things are running in our heads. But I want to say to you that God will show up and he will take care of it. Doesn't matter the size, big or small, God will show up and take care of it. We are waiting for the day when God will show up and take us out of it and testify and say, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of an unhappy marriage. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of a toxic relationship. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of an unsavory workplace. I am the Lord your God who helped you succeed in an academic space where you were never meant to succeed. God will show up in your life. But until then, while God is busy showing up in the little things of life as he does, we are still waiting for that grand day where he will show up and show up permanently. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, but ye also believe in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going and I am going to prepare this place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. We are also looking forward, brethren, to the day where God will permanently show up so that all these challenges of life may be put to rest completely. And I want to pray with someone this evening who is going through the many, many challenges that life has to present to us. Who are on the verge of just letting go and allowing life to consume us and, and consume you and finish you up. I want to ask you where you are that you just... Um, Hold your hand close to your heart. I don't remember where the heart is. I did business studies at school. But wherever you believe your heart is, I also know that my sister, sister-in-law's heart is not in the space where it's supposed to be. There's a medical condition for that. But yeah, so other people's hearts are on the left, others on the right and all those things. But just lift your hand and put it over your chest as a sign to say to God that I have issues that are weighing heavy on my heart. Take me out of there. But at the same time, recognize, brethren, that while we are in it, God is helping us function as though we are not. I said this a few weeks ago at another church. The greatest miracle of life is not God showing up and taking us out of it. The greatest miracle of life is us being kept in it. The greatest miracle is not getting up from a wheelchair. The greatest miracle is functioning while you are on, functioning like an abled person while you are seated on a wheelchair. That is the greatest miracle of life. The greatest miracle is you surviving and living while you are going through what you are going through. I'm going to pray together with everyone tonight who's simply saying that, Dear Lord, I am here. Pass me not. I am here. I have been here, I'm struggling, I can't breathe, I'm hopeless, I want to let go. I want to pray with such people that the Lord may renew your strength, but ultimately he may show up in your life and bring you closer to him. I also want to pray with people, I think I should say this before I sit down as well, who really want to recommit their lives to this Jesus. Yes, sir. We don't say this often enough. We don't talk about it often enough. But Jesus is coming. Yes, sir. Jesus is coming very soon. And I don't want you and myself to be found wanting when he shall come. So I want to also pray with people who recognize that sometimes we are where we are in life because of life's choices. But we want to recommit our lives to Jesus. I'm going to pray together with you. you can close your eyes where we are as we pray together. Our God and our Father in heaven. We thank you for the reading of your word, dear Master. And to thank you for the kind God that you are in our lives. Today we want to pause for a minute and take an audit of our lives. We are looking back, dear Lord, and we are trying, we want to point at the things that we recognize that could have never been because of our strength. Somebody here, dear Lord, one night they were meant to go to bed without food. But somehow a neighbor showed up by their door and said, we have something extra. Here is something for you to eat. They did not know 
that their neighbor is struggling. But you, dear Lord, whispered in their ear and they brought your children something. Couldn't have never been us, it was you. Some of us, dear God, we were pronounced couch potatoes after road accidents. But today we are standing and we are walking. It's not because of our strength or the wisdom of the doctors. It could have only been you. We take stock, dear Lord, of all things that we see in our lives, big and small, that could have never been of our making. We want to thank you for those things. But what also gives us joy, dear Lord, while we take stock of these things, that when we recognize your hand moving in the past in our lives, we are also confident of our today. As if you were God yesterday, then you are faithful enough to be God today. You will even be God tomorrow. You are faithful to yourself. I want to pray for your people. We're going through challenges of life. Search their hearts, dear Lord. Visit them at their point of need. Whatever the challenges of life may be, may you meet us all at our point of need. May we also together one day stand in the corridors of our homes and in the streets of these townships and villages and cities where we live and say that there was a point at which I did not know but God showed up and did something great for me. Dear Lord, when we go through life and its challenges and its temptations and its all these funny things that happen, we tend to take a step back from you. This evening I want to pray for those of us who want to recommit their lives back to you and say, dear Lord, hold our hands and never let us go. May we get to know you better. May we grow in you. May when we have known you and we have lived long enough with you, may we be like you. Care for the poor. Feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. Care for the widow care for the orphans, love those that are unlovable by society standards, help us to be true representatives of heaven. As we rest this evening, I pray that you visit our homes and you rest with us. This I pray in your son's name, and that is the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for this one. Praise the song. Praise the song. Oh, 
Jesus, how I trust you. Thank you to Pastor Manyani for blessing us. Bless you, Pastor Tifo. We thank God for you. May he shine his countenance upon you and give you peace. Especially to those who've received the word, please let God be praised because he has touched many. I know, I know he's a true servant of God who when he says something and it happens. Uh, thank you, my pastor. We are with you, by the way, in the Northern Cape uh, next week. So those who are in the Northern Cape, Let's connect next week on Sabbath. That's where it's at. Not tomorrow, but the 16th. That's where it's at. We have Pastor Nunufo, and we'll be there. Reality 7 will be there. We are having a good time just to worship our God in truth and in spirit. Till we meet again next week, uh, same time, same place. We promise to start on time. There will be no technical glitches. Uh, keep praying for us and we thank you for your support. May God be with you till we meet again. We, first of all, let's go out with this song. Maybe let's try it out. There's no one like Jesus. Like him, oh God, he could oh say, come from man, Jesus, walk up, how on I as one, can ya, can ya, can ya, can ya, oh say, oh say, God, he Rosebank it is tomorrow. We are starting at 10. Come join us in Rosebank. But otherwise, let him shine his countenance upon you and give you peace that surpasseth all understanding in Jesus' name. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Bye-bye.